I wanted to switch gears a bit and talk to you, Chase Strangio, uh, about these recent killings of transgender women across the country. Uh, the body of Alicia Walker, a 20-year-old transgender woman missing for almost a year, was recently found in a crude grave in North Carolina. This comes amidst reports of three other black transgender women killed in Texas, Michigan, and Arizona. Shade Schuler, whose body was found in a Dallas field, Amber Monroe, who was shot and killed in a Detroit park, and Candace Capri, uh, shot dead Tuesday night in Phoenix, Arizona. Now Tamara Dominguez of Kansas City, Missouri, has reportedly become the latest transgender woman murdered, bringing the total number to 17. Dominguez was uh, 17 just this year. Dominguez was run over repeatedly in what's being investigated as a possible hate crime. Um, people are calling this a national crisis. It absolutely is. And I think, uh, you know, as leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement have made clear and trans uh, black leaders have also made clear, this is a, a national crisis. This is a state of emergency for the transgender community. And it's a state of emergency that's disproportionately affecting transgender women of color and particularly black trans women. And we're living in a, in, a, in a moment where we should be incredibly concerned about all of the mechanisms of violence against our community. And state violence includes the violence of police officers, but it also includes all of the ways in which transgender people people, particularly transgender women of color, are, have their lives cut short through systems of discrimination and through the interpersonal violence that leads them to be killed as these women have been. And it is absolutely devastating and I hope that, you know, I, that we don't have to turn on the TV or look on Facebook or Twitter to see another trans woman of color murdered. Are you finding that these women are being, the investigations being treated differently um, than if they weren't transgender? A absolutely. I think for in, in two critical ways. The first is that the media, uh, the local media in particular, often misgenders the, the transgender women, calling them men, which is, you know, itself uh, contributes to the violence against them. And then the delays in bringing people to, to justice is also a, a concern for the transgender community. It's been two years since Elon Nettles was murdered right here in New York City, uh, right here in Harlem. And it, it was a long time before any uh, meaningful investigation was done and people had to take to the streets over and over again. And of course, just bringing an individual to justice is not going to solve the problem of this violence because it is systemic and it is institutional. And we really have to look at all the ways in which transgender people and black transgender women in particular are cut off from systems of support. I wanted to go back for one moment to Chelsea Mann. While Miss Blair White, with her nearly 300,000 subscriber base on YouTube, sits around making apologies for the Trump administration's uh, bathroom policies for transgender kids and making pedophilia allegations at other uh, LGBT YouTubers who want to talk about, uh, you know, homosexuality and gender fluidity and all that. While she sits on YouTube stoking Islamophobic hysteria about Sharia law coming to the United States and wiping out LGBT people, particularly trans people, there is a epidemic of trans murders in the United States of America. A crisis. But particularly regarding trans women of color who are disproportionately victims of violent crime. I tried to be fair. I went through her catalog of videos before making my video. And I said she must have done something on the epidemic in her own country of violence against trans women. This must have been a relevant issue. Nope. No. Blair White has spent her time on YouTube being concerned about feminists hurting the feelings of cishet white men. <laughs> she has spent her time being concerned about the feelings of white people who feel attacked by the, excuse me, by the Black Lives Matters movement. She has done everything except address a issue, an issue 
that is pivotal to the American transgender community. So I myself am not trans, but I'm going to take time on my little channel to try to talk about, number one, a lot of the myths about uh, Islam being the number one threat to trans women in the world. Uh, I'm going to take some time to sort of think out loud about the root causes of, of the uh, epidemic of trans murders in my own country. The, the communities in which a lot of these trans victims are killed are communities like the one that I've grown up in and live in now, which are inner city communities of color who are uh, very religious, um, who are very binary on gender issues. I think that within these communities I've seen a lot of progress um, as regards to cisgender gay people being more accepted within these communities, but there's still a ways to go for, at least, at least in my inner city community, for reconciling gender fluidity and the idea that a trans woman is not a trap there's some people that use this uh, terminology a trap to apply to transgender women who uh, present uh, so strongly as female and uh, do not uh, explain to their partners immediately that they are uh, trans, that they are, uh, you know, pre-op, whatever, whatever you want to call it. As long as this narrative of trans women are not real women is stoked and, and nourished by religiosity, by conservative reactionary elements in our communities of color, we are going to continue to have tolerance issues about gender. Um, the, 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 in other words, trans murder capital of the world, if I put up a poll on Twitter about, you know, who, who do you think, what country do you think is the trans murder capital of the world? And I put on there Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Libya, and Brazil. I guarantee you that one of the Muslim majority nations would win that poll and the explanations in the comments would be no duh, of course, Sharia law. Here's the problem with misinformation. The trans murder capital of the world, the, the, the place where the most trans women per capita are killed, is Brazil. That's why we can't judge the reality of an epidemic on the public image of a country. Because if you asked people where in the world are trans women celebrated, you would, you would get a lot of people saying back to you, Brazil. Because the public image of Brazil is, is that, uh, you know, it's like Thailand or the Philippines where, where, where trans women are, uh, you know, commonplace and accepted within mainstream society. There was a murder this past week that was um, leaked down to the internet, a horrifying murder of a trans woman who was pulled from her home and... Uh, executed by four men in Brazil. 
And it's incredibly important to, to make people aware of where the epidemic is most. <laughs> where, 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 where sort of this cancer has metastasized. The, 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 the severity of this culture that uh, feeds transphobia. If we just kind of reduce everything down to, oh, well, this is, this is a Muslim problem, this is a Sharia problem, we're never going to address this problem. Because we're going to get bogged down in Islamophobia and this fucking Trump style, uh, you know, banning Muslims is going to solve all these problems. We need to have community engagement in these inner city communities of color. We need to have education in these communities where, you know, gender, gender is not as clean cut in terms of presenting to people uh, you know for for their for their consideration for them to find a place of acceptance you need to really really take time educating i mean i remember when i mean i'm not even that old maybe 20 25 years ago there was a lot more explicit homophobia in my inner city community and over time and this is the product of a lot of people speaking out this is a product of um the first black president, Barack Obama, being more tolerant of um, and, and, and being more uh, celebratory of gay people. Moonlight won Best Picture for um, a film about black homosexuality, and particularly a film that has a message about black homosexuality being beautiful and being something to be celebrated and accepted. Um, 25 years ago, in my community, that wouldn't have been a mainstream position, and yet it is now. The idea of, of, of Moonlight is, is really a milestone of progress on the inner city and, and, and gay issues. But we need we need to get there on transgender issues. It 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 really is it really is in a bad place right now in terms of um, people being out, uh, trans people feeling safe to be out, and um, for their partners to feel like they won't uh, receive social reproach and stigma for openly loving uh, their their you know trans their transgender sex and romance partners if we don't expand people's uh, perspectives on this issue, the only thing that happens in the closet is shame. Shame leads to fear, fear leads to violence. So, that's my little contribution to this issue and trying to raise awareness as best I can. Um, just take a moment to think about your what you can do in your own community to normalize something very normal, which is a spectrum, a spectrum of gender.